Hey guys, this is AZ Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to read the refrigerant gauge set. All right, so we're reading our vapor side, our liquid side, and our temperature in order to figure out if we have the proper refrigerant charge. So here we go. So uh, what you have here is this is the low side gauge, all right? This is the vapor side gauge. This gauge and hose set gets connected to the large vapor line, okay? There's two copper line sets, all right? This is the small liquid line. This is the large vapor line, all right? This gauge set is showing you what's happening inside the evaporator coil, all right? Uh, the outside is a pressure ring. It's PSIG, pounds per square inch gauge, all right? Uh, zero is actually, zero PSIG is equal to 14.7 PSIA, which is absolute, all right? So, um, right now we have 65 PSIG, okay? Now, uh, on this unit that we're looking at right here, it says R22 refrigerant right here, all right? So when you hook your gauge set up, you need to be able to figure out what refrigerant it is. And this is the reading plate right here, okay? The rating plate will tell you what refrigerant it is, all right? If you can't find it on the rating plate or it's wore off, uh, most of the time it's also labeled on the compressor, okay? Um, if you can't find it out, you know, via those two areas, check out another one of my videos, which is... Um, the pressure temperature correlation when you hook gauge sets up and you can just tell what refrigerant it is because of the correlating temperature all right but uh, I'm just going to continue on from here for right now okay so the system's running okay we have 65 PSIG if you follow that in to the green ring that is the R22 saturated temperature that means both liquid and vapor exist in the middle of the evaporator coil, okay? That's the indoor coil, all right? So that's the coil that would be located uh, right next to the furnace or um, in the air handler, okay? And so right now, 65 PSIG, we have 37.5 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil, okay? While the liquid and vapor both exist, all right? So that's where it's at. Now, in the, the high side gauge, you have the liquid pressure, all right, PSIG. Okay, you follow that in. Right now, we are running at 157, okay, PSIG. All right, each of these lines are equal to five PSIG increments, okay, whether it's in the low side gauge or the high side gauge, all right. The increments are actually jammed more together because you have a higher uh, pressure gauge set on this side than you do on this side, okay? Uh, but they each line does equal 5 PSIG, all right? So right here you have this line right here is 150, all right? The next line will be 155, so we have 156 PSIG. You follow that over to the green saturated temperature in the middle of this condenser coil, okay? In the middle of that where the saturated state is where liquid and vapor both exist. We have 84.5 degrees. Okay, so that's it. That's the temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. This gauge set represents the outdoor condenser. All right. So um, what we have on this side, the low side gauge, if we had a saturated temperature below freezing. That would mean that we either have to add refrigerant or uh, either the, the metering device is clogged, all right, or there's some type of restriction in the liquid line, okay, right before the evaporator coil or in the evaporator coil, or, okay, or the airflow is bad, all right, whether the blower motor is bad um, or the filter is, is clogged. All right, if there's no airflow, when this thing starts up, it's just going to continue going all the way down to zero. If, if, if you turn a system on and it just goes down a little bit and you cannot increase the charge by adding refrigerant, there's probably either a uh, restriction in the line uh, or your blower speed may not be high enough, all right, or your TXV bulb may not be allowing enough refrigerant through. But anyway... Um, you have to first get your refrigerant up 
above 32 degrees on this vapor side, all right, in order to even start charging, okay? This pressure, okay, has to do with the heat exchange on the outdoor condenser coils, all right? So if the coils are really dirty, okay, or they're, they're just... Um, uh, maybe the salt air has eroded them or whatever from, from maybe like around here or, or coastal. So we have a lot of salt spray from the, from the beach and everything. All right. But uh, so as the condenser fins, these fins back here break down, uh, the pressure is going to increase higher and higher. All right. And that's because it cannot reject the heat fast enough. This is where you reject heat. This is where you absorb heat. All of the heat from within the building is absorbed in the actual refrigerant and brought outside to the outdoor condensing unit and it's rejected outside all right so the more efficient your system is the lower the head pressure will be okay this is called discharge the high side the liquid side or the head pressure all right uh, this is considered the low side or the vapor side all right all right now we're going to get into how to check this unit for subcooling, okay? How how do we tell if this system is correct on refrigerant, or if it needs to add, if we need to add refrigerant, or we need to take out refrigerant? All right. If the indoor unit, the indoor evaporator cooler, has a thermostatic expansion valve like this inside, right before the evaporator coil, or either inside the box or right outside the box, then what you need to do is you need to check in subcooling, okay? Which means to check the charge. You're going to use this gauge set, all right? The red high side gauge. The thing is, you still need to make sure that this vapor pressure is above 32 degrees before you even bother checking in subcooling or superheat charging process, all right? So if this is holding above 32 degrees, all right, then you can go ahead and check your refrigerant, all right? You need to actually add refrigerant if it's below 32 degrees. So if you know that your airflow is good and your filter is clean, all right, uh, you're going to add refrigerant and try to get it up to 32 degrees when you're starting checking a unit for the first time. All right. Since we have a thermostatic expansion valve, what we can do is we can check with this high side gauge since this gauge is above 32 degrees. So we know that the refrigerant on here is R22. All right, the TXV subcooling, it, sa it states 12 degrees. If the rating plate does not state any subcooling, then you need to figure it's somewhere between 8 to 12 degrees of subcooling. And I usually try to figure maybe about 10 degrees of subcooling if the rating plate does not say any subcooling. All right, I'm shooting for a target of 10 typically. All right, but I have seen rating plates on just standard outdoor condensers that have been as high as 17 degrees subcooling. All right, and I've seen them as low as uh, usually 8, okay, 8 degrees of subcooling. So, all right, we have 80, let's call it 85, all right, well, 84.5 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil minus the actual temperature on the liquid line, all right? So I usually just electrical tape the sensor, the temperature sensor, onto the liquid line, all right? You could have a clamp on sen uh, sensor. You know, you could have a laser sensor or whatever, whatever, you know, just something that does not absorb any temperature from the surrounding air. Okay, so if we have 84.5 minus 72 degrees, then we're going to get, we are going to get 12.5 degrees of subcooling. Okay, it's a temperature decrease in liquid form. All right, so we start here in the middle of the condenser quill. Um, and then after all the refrigerant rejects more and more heat, it turns into a complete liquid and then it comes out at the service port. All right. That's where you're taking your gauge set reading at and that's where you're taking your temperature reading at. All right. So it's a temperature decrease in liquid form. All right. From here to what this temperature is here. All right. So once again, this multimeter temp sensor is actually electrical taped onto the liquid line and also it's a good thing to also put some armaflex or insulation over that as well just to make sure <clears throat> that it uh, is not absorbing any temperature from the sun or from the surrounding air so this system actually is good all right if you have anywhere from say 9 
to 15 degrees of TXC TXV subcooling, then your charge will act proper. All right. Now, I would like to say that I usually typically, if it's calling for 12, I'll end up charging it to 13. All right. Because typically people are going to be hooking gauge sets up and disconnecting. And I just want to make sure that we're not losing refrigerant below the actual TXV subcooling. You know, that might just be done in a preventative maintenance where somebody's hooking up gauge sets and disconnecting. Uh, now, if you want to know how to minimize your refrigerant loss when hooking up gauge sets and disconnecting, check out that video in my playlist, um, in the air conditioning heat pump playlist. If you go to the channel, if you go to the channel site and just type in uh, disconnecting in the search, you should be able to find the um, video that I'm talking about where you hook a gauge set up and then you can actually charge the liquid that you're getting into this line back in through the vapor lining so that you're only disconnecting with vapor. All right. So this system is good because it's actually stating we have about 12.5 degrees of subcooling presently. All right. I like to get it to about 13, but this charge is correct. All right. If you have questions regarding reading the gauge sets, all right, and temperature, then go ahead and put that in the comment box down below. All right. There's also a lot of playlists uh, and videos that I have um, just for checking refrigerants and different scenarios, uh, TXV diagnosis, uh, all of those types of things. All right. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.